Good morning, children. Welcome to the social session. Children, in the previous class, we started Indian rivers and water resources and uh, the rational and equitable usage of the water availability, uh, the water available in the village, how it should be used efficiently, we were trying to understand. We have seen uh, one Adarsha Gram Yojana called as Hivare Bazar, which is located in Ahmednagar district of uh, Maharashtra. This is selected as a Adarsha Gram Yojana because of the uh, four bandis, that is nothing but the Nasha Bandi, Nas Bandi, Cherai Bandi and Kurat Bandi. Because of these uh, four bands, uh, it got selected as a Adarsha Gram Yojana and uh, there were a number of techniques followed in order to conserve the water. As of physical location is concerned, it is located in the north uh, rain shadow region of the Western Ghats in the Sahyadri region. And uh, because of uh, the less rainfall, the rainfall is uh, nearly 400 millimeters uh, per annum. So, because very less rainfall occurs in this region, people started conserving the groundwater so that whatever little water available for them, they started conserving it and uh, uh, harvesting it through the watershed programs. And if you look at uh, the CCTs, yesterday I have spoken about the CCTs, the continuous uh, counter trenches constructed across the uh, hill slopes has made them to conserve the water. The significance of these uh, five ideals of uh, Nasha Bandi, Nas Bandi and uh, physical uh, voluntary labor being uh, done by these uh, laborers, by these uh, villagers, households made them to understand keeping in mind uh, the situation of the Hivare Bazaar uh, at the time of uh, late 1980s. So tree felling and open grazing is completely uh, uh, prohibited there are common among both rich and poor households. The surrounding hillocks according to the uh, many local people had a barren look. It was completely dry and it uh, the hillocks looks like a barren uh, lo uh, look. Soil erosion was very prominent because of the rainfall and groundwater levels were very low uh, because of the rain shadow region and in addition to this uh, there was a scarcity of fodder and uh, firewood shortage was also there in the nearby forest uh, these were very common in the village during the 1980s though there was a ban on the tree felling or tree free grazing people were allowed to uh, cut the grass and carry it to feed animals so in some areas where the grass was grown so that grass was allowed to cut and it was used for uh, feeding the animals. There are uh, other bands in the village also in which, uh, uh, which were added later and most insignificant, most significant among them was the ban on the bore wells for irrigation. You cannot put a bore well. Now in our city we can put bore well without anybody's permission. You can dig if somebody, your neighbor has uh, dug it for 100 uh, meters, then we go for 200 meters, isn't it? It's a, like a race. How deep you go is like a race to bring out the groundwater. But there is a complete ban on the bore wells in this village. And growing sugarcane and banana is also completely banned because it requires a lot of water. So water consuming crops were completely banned and selling one's land to any other seller is also completely banned. To outsider you should not sell your land. These measures illustrate the uh, the issues of long term sustainability especially in terms of water usage and which were very very much uh, central to the strategy the strategy was to conserve the water and to efficiently use the water the bandis uh, were not mere proclamations but way of community living there building aimed at uh, uh, people identifying with the common purpose they can be identified with the common purpose of harvesting the water so that they follow it with uh, more strictly it is not like a law being implemented forcibly but they participate voluntarily and they see that these bandis are uh, uh, implemented but it was not always a smooth affair to implement such kind of bandis. We have seen a number of issues even coming up in the Adarsha Gramam of uh, Gangadevapalli of Warangal rural district also. But these uh, implementation after few years has become a smooth run. The area irrigated for summer crops has increased from 7 to 72 hectares and in a year of normal rainfall there is enough water even in the wells to irrigate not only the uh, Karif Bajra uh, but also the Rabi uh, Jawar. So these crops Bajra and Jawar are uh, grown even with a uh, little water. So now they have sufficient uh, water even not only to grow the Karif crop but even to grow the Bajra crop. Uh, the Rabi crop uh, even in uh, the Rabi crop Jawar. 
so some veg, uh, summer vegetables also they can grow they have sufficient water now even in unirrigated land the land which doesn't have the irrigational facility even in unirrigated land the there was an improvement of soil moisture a level has helped to increase the productivity of those soils and the range of the crop which is also considerably more diverse than in the past with the people growing uh, only cash crops such as potatoes uh, onions uh, fruits uh, fruits like grapes and pomegranates which require very less uh, water and flowers and wheat the diverse crops they started growing now diverse means different kinds of crops they started growing uh, in a uh, hiware bazar perhaps the most significant development is the uh, uh, increased water availability underground and which uh, which has made a second crop possible and hence uh, migration of the laborer or migration of the villagers elsewhere has got reduced in the village now they are getting settled in their village and they can take up the agricultural activity also and almost uh, they hasn't met that small and marginal farmers uh, are able to eke out their living through this uh, farming activity on their own lands it has made their lands uh, much more productive than before uh, previously uh, the productivity was very low they unable to make enough uh, uh, money to lead a living uh, livelihood but now they can eke out their livelihood uh, with the product uh, with the production of these agriculture the conditions of wage employment uh, have also improved with wage rates uh, with the uh, wage rates uh, going up uh, though they remain uh, on the low side but still there is a good improvement in the uh, wage uh, rate system and apart from that uh, the main thing is uh, the social control over ground water uh, extraction and use of uh, and uh, no bore well was uh, dug for the irrigation purpose of course bore well can be dug for the drinking water but for the irrigation you should not uh, dig any bore well in the village no water intensive crops uh, like sugar cane paddy should be irrigated water for irrigation should be taken taken should be taken only through the dug wells but not through the bore wells and uh, they have also worked uh, over certain thumb rules like uh, they if they get good rainfall then they go they can take up a rabi full crop they can go for a full rabi crop if the rainfall is less then they bring uh, down the area under the rabi they don't cultivate the entire area but they uh, reduce the area of cultivation if there is a less normal rainfall they keep the rainfall uh, rainfall data meticulously okay and uh, use it for crop planning and water use the prioritization what should be used first for water and what should be used later water should be used first for what case and uh, water should be used second for what case will be decided depending upon the water data they get or the rainfall data which they collect and uh, even in the years because of all this uh, even in the drought years and continuous drought year and no drinking water uh, there was a no drinking water shortage in the village because of all this planning and this is mainly because they plan according to the water availability Bec uh, they plan according to the rainfall data they plan it uh, for the rabi crop that is the reason why it was uh, a better uh, water uh, harvesting strategy that made hiware bazar a successful place to live now the improvement of the livestock also can be seen and the economy has also uh, helped marginal and uh, small uh, farmers uh, significantly and concerned efforts have been made even to promote hiware bazar's uh, uh, dairy industry dairy industry in the sense milking as a means to improve their livelihood as a second income for them by selling the milk and loans have been given to the small farmers as a result the number of milch animals that means milking animals in the village also has increased uh, these development are clearly linked to the fact that the fodder availability in the village the fodder which he, the open grazing was is completely banned there so the fodder availability was less previously but now the fodder availability has increased and better productivity is coming out milk production in the village has increased uh, has witnessed more than 20 fold increase from 140 liters to 33000 liters per day so you can imagine how a tremendous increase uh, is found even in the milk production also because of the good fodder available in the hiware bazaar one the underground water development we have seen and because of that we also have seen the development of the standard of living of these hiware bazaar villagers however 
one of the learnings uh, has been that groundwater extraction cannot be controlled at a small uh, unit or within a village uh, uh, boundary. Neighboring villages also started uh, uh, going for deep bore, uh, bore wells and starting extracting more water, groundwater over which Hivara Bazar had no control. So, hence we need some institutional norms that mean government wise certain uh, rules and regulations must be implemented so that the neighboring village when you are protecting the groundwater the other uh, neighboring village may extract more water so groundwater is all connected you cannot control it with the uh, village boundary which are on the surface so these kind of uh, institutional norms are the governmental norms rules and regulations law when you implement it it becomes very easy for understanding it a ma much larger unit uh, like sub basin or river basin and we can improve in the low rainfall areas as well as in the drought prone areas we can improve the watershed program in this way in the next class children we shall understand about the water as a common pool resource and how water should be effectively used for the benefit of everybody thank you children.